time to introduce Dr. Krista Varity. Krista was as is an expert on our program. Krista's been involved with us since day one when we launched over four years ago now. And you'll see a lot of articles written by Krista on our program. We've got some video content and we're about to film more, which is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. So Krista, you are an intermittent fasting um, researcher in particular. That's your specialty, isn't it, Krista? It is, yeah. I've been studying intermittent fasting for the past 15 years or so. So I started studying it long before, I think a lot of people did, but it's been a great, great experience. And tell me, when did you first discover how fantastic intermittent fasting is for you and how? How did you make that discovery? So I started studying it because I noticed that people really didn't like daily calorie restriction People just get really burnt out of having to, you know, log stuff in their phone or food records or that type of thing every day. So I thought, well, do people really have to diet every day to lose weight or can they maybe just diet on alternate days or in certain time windows of the day? Like, how can we what can we do to make this more simple for people? Yep, fantastic. Now, I love the story about one of your studies with the mice and how you discovered how great intermittent fasting, I mean, I know you've done countless studies, but mm -hmm. that, that one that you first did, which was pretty revolutionary, tell us a, a little bit about that. We started studying it in mice and we found that basically a whole bunch of really amazing benefits. So they saw reductions in body weight and then improvements in like diabetes risk factors and heart disease risk factors. And in mice, it actually seemed to be working better than like just traditional dieting. So it was, yeah, it was really amazing. And that was kind of in the mid 2000s when we started those studies. And then from there, I was wondering, well, can humans do this? And, and will it help lower disease risk in humans? So it kind of moved on from the mouse studies. Yeah, probably around 2007 or so. Fantastic. And in, it was around 2012, the BBC did a documentary and it pretty much exploded then, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then that, I think, really got it intermittent fasting became really popular in the UK first, I'd say, uh, with Michael Mosley's book. And then um, and then I think it's kind of picked up in other countries and in the US, probably in the past five years. Yeah. So I remember you featured very, very strongly in that, doc that original documentary, which intermittent fasting became pretty much mass market after that. Um, and now the science has moved on so much further, hasn't it, Krista? Oh, it has. There's lots of basically we're testing the effects of intermittent fasting on like almost everything. Um, yeah. So we've looked definitely at like heart disease risk factors, weight loss, um, diabetes. But people are also looking at like brain health now, whether or not it can help lower dementia, Alzheimer's. Um, we're, we're about to start a study in um, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. I saw some in the chat. People were asking about how it affects hormone levels. We just um, published a paper on that. It doesn't have any negative effect, by the way, on hormone levels or fertility hormones or anything. It's also been helpful to, if people do lose a lot of weight and have diabetes, it actually can help reverse diabetes in some people. So just basically like everything, now it's getting tested on everything. Excellent, excellent. So, and now you're in the middle of some very extensive studies. Do you want to share a little sneak I know you haven't got results yet, but a little sneaky um, peek. Are you allowed to? Are you allowed to tell people what you're studying at the moment? Yeah, yeah. We, so we so we started a study that is um, a long-term study of time-restricted eating, um, where people are eating within an eight-hour window, and we're comparing that to um, daily calorie restriction. So we're just trying to see if it does work better, if people can stick to that form of eating longer than like a traditional diet. Um, and then we also want to see, can intermittent fasting be used for weight maintenance? Because a lot of people have that question, well, now that I've lost the weight, what do I do? You know, do I stick to this diet? So, um, so yeah, we, and those results should probably be published in the next like couple months or so. That's what we're hoping. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so Krista, you do intermittent fasting yourself, obviously. Do, would you like to share what method you particularly use? Because um, at the moment, um, our our members are doing the three-day method, which we're very familiar with, mm -hmm. similar to the Every Other Day Diet, the book that you wrote. Um, so what do you actually do yourself now? I know you're maintaining, but 
Adam Chips would love to know. Uh, so I, I've used two different methods. So I've used alternate day fasting when I had, um, I had two, I have two sons. So now they're a little older. They're like seven and 10 years old, but after pregnancy, you know, I had the extra like 15 pounds. So I definitely wanted to lose that weight. Um, my apologies. I'm going to move over. This light is driving me crazy. Um, <laughs> sorry nice. about that. I, um, anyway, okay, much better, much better. Um, so right after pregnancy, I wanted to lose weight with that, and it worked really well. And then now I just I use time-restricted eating, and I basically stop eating about – I say my window is more like 11 to 7. So my main goal is to just not eat anything after dinner time. As long as I just have that rule where I don't like snack after dinner. Because I used to do that a lot. Um, having kids, you know, hanging out with my husband at night. It was like our time. But I couldn't help but reach for like whatever. It wasn't always unhealthy snacks. But, you know, sometimes it was nuts. But sometimes it was like chips or something like that. So now that I cut that out, I find it much easier to just maintain weight for sure. Fantastic. Well, we might ask, answer some questions if that's okay, Krista, because I know that they've been asking questions. Does intermittent fasting mess up your hormones? What are your thoughts, Krista, on that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, what we found is that it actually doesn't affect hormones at all. It doesn't negatively affect hormones. The only place where it might affect hormones is in athletes, so resistance trained men, so men that are doing like weightlifting or a lot of bodybuilding. There has been decreases in testosterone noted in, um, in those men. But then for some reason, it doesn't seem to affect like muscle mass or have any negative effects. But in general, it, there's no, I know that it's, it's a really major cause for concern that fasting may affect um, that, but it, it doesn't. That's great news. Excellent. It is. Yeah, we're happy to find that result too. <laughs> Can you talk about um, your, your thoughts on how intermittent fasting affects diabetes? Oh, sure. So we that that's actually another study we're running right now. We're using the 16-8 diet to um, basically eating within an eight-hour window. And we're trying to see if people can, well, three things, lower body weight and then lower medication use. So insulin and then metformin, all the different medications people are on. And then eventually, hopefully, actually create some type of remission with that. So we just started that study. Um, so we don't know yet, but I do have to say, I get so many emails from people saying that they've been doing intermittent fasting for years. And I have heard like anecdotal evidence of people actually completely reversing, um, their type two diabetes with intermittent fasting. So I think it's definitely possible. Fantastic. I know Dr. Jason Fung, um, he's also Canadian from Toronto and he, he is a nephrologist, but he specializes in diabetes and weight loss. And he has seen many of his patients reverse their type 2 diabetes. Um, where are you publishing? If you want to see all my stuff, you just literally like type in PubMed into Google. So P-U-B-M-E-D. And then type in my name, Krista Verity. And then you'll see all of our scientific publications. But we have been cited in like the New York Times and Scientific American and that type of thing for more of like, um, yeah, just more of like a general a general representation of it but um but yeah and then if they want to know what journals like jama and cell and that type of thing if you're interested brilliant brilliant great question does wine fit in or doesn't it with time restricted eating if during that eight hours it's fine to have you know but alcohol in moderation for sure so that's generally one glass a day for women and then two glasses a day for for men um absolutely totally fine to do that. I know any diet that yeah cuts out anything fun, you know, people can't stick to. So it's really important to um, let people just live basically. Definitely. Definitely. Um, when you fast, do you go without food completely or do you eat a certain number of calories? The amazing part about 16-8 is that you do not have to count calories at all. You just pick the, the duration of your window. So a lot of people pick eight hours and then you pick where you want to put place it in the day. So I'd say most commonly people pick like 11 to 7 or 12 to 8, just because, you know, people don't want to basically have a window where they can't eat with their families at night or do any social eating. Um, and then you do not need to count calories. So say you pick 12 to 8, you just start eating at 12, you stop at 8, and then you just wait till the next day. And during the fasting window, um, you have just like water, um, black coffee, black tea, or we actually allow people to have like a little bit of, um, 
sugar and, and cream, like just one or two teaspoons in their coffee if they really need to. But super simple, no counting calories. Yeah, perfect. And if you're doing like the three-day method or the two-day method, you do get to eat food. You don't have to starve yourself. It's zero calories. It's lower calories. Yes. So like what we're doing this week, um, we're keeping to 1,000 calories for three days. Um, pretty broad question, but I'm sure you're up to it, Krista. Can you simply explain the science behind intermittent fasting? Great question. Oh, sure. So very simply, I think a lot of people are confused because they hear about like ketones and autophagy and all this stuff. But honestly, the reason why intermittent fasting works is because it helps people eat less food. So it kind of like tricks the body into eating less. Um, when you're eating within an eight hour window, people tend to cut out around 500, anywhere from three to 500 calories a day, just naturally. So really that's, that's all that's happening. And when you eat less food, you lose weight. And then when you lose weight, that just naturally helps decrease like blood pressure and cholesterol levels and, and improve insulin resistance. So I wouldn't say it's not a magical diet. It's just really helping people eat less. Brilliant. Brilliant. Excellent. When doing time restricted fasting, do we still keep our daily calories to a thousand? Um, I'll, I'll answer that. You can do either. So you can, you can, if you want to do like the three day method or We'll talk later this week about other methods that you can do like two days a week or time restricted eating you can combine the methods not to confuse you with too much information here but you can you can eat those calories in a in a time window or you can spread them out it whatever works your lifestyle uh, i'm confused if you're fasting while you have three meals a day and that, that's a great question because on different methods of intermittent fasting or intermittent eating, you might prefer to call it, you can still eat. It's just a lower amount of calories. So you have low days and high days. Intermittent fasting is, it's a, I know exactly what it is because Krista told me the definition, a period of eating followed by a period of not eating. <laughs> exactly. So that's the most basic definition, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, I have fatty liver disease with this. Will this help with it? Great question. So we are just about to publish um, a paper in fatty liver disease where we combine alternate day fasting with exercise. Uh, it was aerobic exercise. So people were doing like elliptical training and then having 500 calories every other day. And we did find that it significantly lowered liver fat. So it dropped it by about five or six percent and we measured that with like mri so it was a very like robust study and and hopefully you know we it's literally under review right now in cells so hopefully we'll get it published soon but i'm happy to um share information more information about that on my instagram when it comes out that is so exciting that is brilliant news can you combine 68 with a, a two day or three day yes you can yes. <laughs> <laughs> You and Jen actually came up with that. It's like, it's genius, honestly. I, since I've been studying intermittent fasting, I've really looked at like alternate day fasting and time restricted eating, the two major types. But Jen, Jen and Victoria came up with this amazing kind of combo approach that seems to work for people really, really well. So, yes, it's actually part of our program, which we would obviously love you all to join after these five days. Um, I'll ask another question because it's a question we get asked a lot from ladies who have thyroid issues. Um, will it still work for them? Will they be able to lose weight? So, yep, we we did um, like a sub-analysis of one of our large studies where we found people that had um, thyroid disorders or subclinical, and they lost weight just as well as people that didn't. So it worked well in that, in that population. So, yeah, it's great. That's excellent news. <laughs> Fantastic. Will fasting still work if you have a, if you do it at a different time every day? I think it's probably easier for your body if you stick to a certain window, just because your circadian rhythm, like your internal body clock, um, you know, it adjusts to a certain, your body will expect food at a certain, excuse me, a certain time every day. So I think it would be easier for you in the long term if you started the window with, you know, within like a one to two hour window. Um, but there's still, that's a question I actually, I was talking to one of my students today about, so there's no actual data on it, but I think, you know, allowing your body to adjust to a certain pattern would probably be best. Brilliant. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you, Dr. Krista. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we're going to let Dr. Krista go. Thank you thank so, you so much. much, Krista. Thanks for all the great questions. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye.